Hey y'all, it's Region 4 Outreach and Communications Coordinator Matt Cameron and today on Drop the Tailgate we're going to do a little turkey trapping here in East Tennessee and I'm with Sterling Daniels. He is a wildlife manager I went to college with at the premier wildlife school in the state, the University of Tennessee in Knoxville and uh, man that's been a long time ago now. It has, it's getting old. <laughs> you see the gray in this beard here, we've been talking about that all morning but uh, today we're going to trap some turkeys and uh, Sterling works with big game species quite a bit. Tell us in general what you do. Yeah, my position is tied more or less to the population side of things. We do check stations, uh, you know, we do the bear surveys, the Harrison Air surveys, uh, bait stations, anything population data collection wise, uh, which just obviously ties in big game being wild turkeys, uh, doing the banding that we're doing today. Okay, so why are we trapping these turkeys and putting bands on? Well, so we have a, a statewide turkey team and we just recently finished our management plan. And in that plan, one of our objectives was to kind of improve the population monitoring system. And this is one of the strategies that was put in that uh, plan, uh, a lake band recovery survey, in order to get some data, uh, annual survival rates and harvest rates from hunters. This is a statewide project that's, you know, what we're doing today, the other guys, counterparts in other regions, uh, law enforcement, fisheries guys that we have here today helping out. It's a, it's a big project, a lot of folks involved. and. Like I said, it's, it's mirrored in each region. So we have four regions, obviously, in the agency. Um, so we're looking at doing about eight to 10 sites in each region. Um, more or less, we're trying to get 10 to 12 gobblers banded at each site. We want our numbers up to have a better chance of those birds being recovered yeah. um, on return. So ideally, we'll have fewer sites with more birds on them. And our target is 75 gobblers per region, 300 statewide in a year, which is a big feat we found out this year, at least in East Tennessee. And that's a four-year project, so target would be 1,200 birds by the end of the four years banded. You know, turkeys are fast. Uh, I've read they can run up to 25 miles per hour and they can fly 55 miles per hour. How are you going to catch these things? Well, the rockets that we're using are fast. Um, we've got some charges inside this this box magazine that um, they have a propellant, kind of like the howitzer propellants using the military, there's a black powder uh, and electric match that ignites that black powder to, to, to set the propellant off. And these rockets will be attached to the front end of our net and you'll see hopefully in some of the footage the viewers will get to look at. Uh, the ideal is to get the bait placed in a certain location. You want the birds to be kind of grouped in tight on that bait and ideally they're comfortable, they're feeding, their heads are down to where the reaction time's a little slower. And when that rocket pulls that net across them, by the time they react, it's over top of them. Uh, and they tend to jump, you know, hunters have probably missed some birds, and first thing they do when you shoot is jump straight up. Uh, that's what they'll typically do with this net, and then it'll kind of pocket and catch them. All right, so we're going to capture them, and then you've got these bands here you're going to put on them. Um, tell us about the leg bands and, and what hunters uh, need to do if they kill birds. These bands, we're using pop ribs to attach them. They'll be attached above the foot, between the spur and the foot. Uh, the reason we're using these pop pop rivet style bands instead of the, like the waterfowl hunters are probably used to the uh, the butt end bands. These uh, probably have a little bit better retention and so we'll take pop rivet gun, place these around, pop rivet them in. Uh, if a hunter finds one of these, probably the only way to remove it's going to be to drill that pop rivet out. So um, there's a phone number, obviously there's a band number on here, a four digit number, and then there's a phone number to the Nashville office. There's a couple ways these can be reported, but the, the main thing it's important that they find one of these bands, whether it be, you know, a a, a turkey non-harvest mortality, they find it laying somewhere with a band on it where it's a hunter harvest. Call this number. Uh, there's a couple things that can be done there. If they don't have internet access, they can give the information to the person that answers the phone, or they, they'll be directed to a website to enter that. But that's the most important part. Get these, if you do harvest a bird that has this, return it to us, get us, get us that information. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to provide you some information. So early on, batcher groups of gobblers are at these sites, uh, which is what we wanted. Know, we, I don't know if I mentioned it, but we are just targeting male gobblers in the okay. survey. And um, now we're getting to that point, you know, the length of daylight's getting longer, the photo period's changing, so that's triggering getting ready for the breeding season. Uh, these birds are mixing. And that's why we came here today, afternoon, midday afternoon set, because in the mornings we've been having a lot of hens at this side, typically three or four gobblers and about 15 hens. Uh, as the day moves on, these gobblers will come back in smaller groups, four to five, six, maybe eight. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for this evening. We'll just have a small group that moves in that we can catch and we'll have those non target hens in the bed. All right, man. You ready to go? Let's go. Let's make me think.
think of Wiley Coyote when he's going to dynamite the road runner and he rolls that detonator out. I hope it works a little better than he <laughs> All right, Matt, so what we've done, we've got this bait set about 20 to 21 feet away from the box. Uh, that allows, it's once those rockets come up, they're going to be roughly above my hand, and as those birds jump, they'll pocket into that net and pull them down out here behind us. Um, so it's specific. That's why we try to bait this area uh, at that distance to get them conditioned to coming in. And um, what you saw here at the box was our anchor lines off each side, the drag weights in the back end, and the three rockets that pull the net over the front. Um, so I think we're pretty well set up, ready to get in the blind. So we just got set up. Uh, we got our blinds set about 40 yards away. We've got a wire running from the rocket uh, box. We've got two blinds. We've got officers here uh, helping us out. And we've got our truck parked in the back. One of our fisheries guys is here to help today. And uh, basically, we want to be able to get to that net quickly if we deploy it and, and get out there and secure the birds. First thing we want to do is, is check our uh, circuitry, make sure we have a closed circuit. So we wired in the rockets in sequence. And uh, as long as we get a reading here, we'll know everything's good and closed. And this is our blaster. So I'll go ahead and hook one end in and leave the other one until we actually see some birds come in. And it, basically it's a depress the left side for about three seconds. When the light comes on, it's ready to fire. There's a pile of hens that's been coming in, the evenings. Can you see their beards and heads pretty good? Yeah, there's some of them that don't have red heads that have many tiny beards. But there's at least ten that have two, three, four inch beards. Red heads. Okay. Jakes are on the left side. Jakes are on the left. There's two long beards in the very back. Ten of them jakes come right in. I'll just send it off for the hits get down there. I mean, they're perfect right now. I just don't know how many's in there. I'd say there's six or seven. You think so? With beards. One of them's a hen, I know. Like, I'm gonna let this one come back to him. I may shoot it. Whatever you want. Let that jake get in there and I'll shoot. Got any jakes? Three. Three jakes. This is a jake. Rick, if that can get out, I'd just let it go. 
both of them right there. If you want to let them go, you can. See if you can hold those two right there, Kenny. I got this one. We'll get them out real quick. I'm going to get this one banded, and then we'll let them all out. This is a long beard. Thank you. It must, I didn't see it until I looked at his spur, and he's, he's not a big one. Probably. He's a bearded hand. That one is number 24, that's our first one. 24 is the gobbler, yes, and then we just put 57 on. 25 is put up. We'll go ahead and throw 26 on this one. My first turkey trapping adventure was so much fun, I invited my dad and my buddy Chuck to join us on another outing a few days later. Both of these guys are recently retired and jumped at the chance to try and trap some turkeys. No comparison to when I was a kid growing up, well, didn't have any turkey. Very few deer. So, yes, uh, uh, it's amazing, really, to what it was when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, you see deer everywhere now in the cities and uh, everywhere you look, and turkeys seem like you see them the same way. You know, they just multiplied and. Uh, efforts TWRA has done to, you know, transport them and uh, trap them, relocate them, really get that a lot. What you done here, one gobble? I heard him right here. Oh, I think right there. Really? Yeah. They're super close here. Yeah, we'll, we'll get some leaves and stuff, camo everything in. It sounds like the birds are right behind us in the trees, so hopefully we don't spook them too bad this morning. The only predictable thing about a turkey is that they're unpredictable. And when they named on the wild turkey, they sure got it right. Although we didn't have any luck, we enjoyed watching three long beards cross the field and pass us by. Following a couple more unsuccessful outings, we roosted the birds the night before and snuck in early the next morning to give it another try. Give us an update, Sterling. All right, we think we might have them figured out. We've uh, we come in this yesterday afternoon, uh, hoping to just get a group of gobblers, and uh, we watched the probably six, eight gobblers go across with the hens and roost on the opposite side of the hill. So we're going to go get set this morning, and hopefully they'll come down, and, and we'll do the best we can to get the gobblers separated. But we're probably going to catch a few hens this morning. But should happen. I think we'll have good action. That short, that other one's a hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
215 even. Right. This one's 25. So number 20, 88, 25. Give this one a four on its condition. If you want to split. Sterling, you know, we came out the first afternoon, turkeys running everywhere, had a lot of action, came back, uh, couple mornings and another afternoon and it was a bust and then we finally got back in here this morning and had turkey show up. Yeah we spent a lot of time on this side Matt. We, uh, we were able to get eight bands out prior to today. Um, afternoon sits were working for us because we weren't getting in like you saw. We got in too close to them a couple times and couldn't make it happen. And we wouldn't probably have came this morning but we noticed the birds roosted off site so we uh, slipped back in got set up and uh, so there's not a lot of banded turkeys out there, but there is a possibility that a hunter will take one, and we hope that they do so we can get the information back. So if, if they do kill a banded bird, they just need to call the number on the band. Is that how it works? That's correct. There's a number on the band, and uh, someone will answer that. Uh, when they call in, they can give them the information, or they'll direct them to a form online that they can put that information in themselves. Uh, but yeah, that's really important that they get that information to us, turn those bands in, um, and you know, like I said, this without that, we're we're not getting the harvest rate information that we need uh, to help guide the, you know the management of the turkey population across the state. Fantastic. Well, it's it's been fun getting up early and getting out of here. Got to hear a few gobbles, not near as many as we kind of expected this morning. But I know y'all been you've been doing this for just about every day of the week. You've got to hear a lot of gobbling, seeing some strut activity and everything already. We have. It's been fun. Um, just this past week, we've had. Uh, a lot of activity picking up. We're the first week of March now, so birds are strutting, gobbling as they come off the roost at some sites. And uh, yeah, we've been after them. We're hoping to wrap up in the next week or two. So. This will get you excited, lead you right into turkey season. It's coming up the Looking end of the month. To it. All right, well, Sterling, thanks for taking me out, man. I appreciate you. I enjoyed this. Um, Glad to have you. Yeah, and I hope our viewers have, uh, have watched it and have learned about the, the turkey trapping uh, project that we're doing. And I uh, hope you're getting excited about going out and killing you a Tennessee long beard this year. But, but thank y'all for watching and join us next time for some more fun in the Tennessee Great Outdoors.